morning, church family. Let's stand and uh, sing of the mercy and grace that was found at Calvary. Let's sing together. Here's a Thank you. 
Amen. The saving love of Christ be shared throughout this world is through Operation Christmas Child. We have the opportunity just in a couple weeks to turn in boxes that will be touched by children throughout the world. And so we wanted to give you uh, a little story from one who had received the box today. Please watch this video and uh, pray and ask. My name is Elizabeth Costner, and I'm from Latvia. My childhood was not the easiest one. I had two younger siblings with me, and we lived in a super poor environment. My birth parents were very alcoholic and drug addicts, and so living with them was always never safe. One day, a social worker came to my house. She walks in, and then not long after that, she comes back out, and she tells us to get in the car. And she drove us all the way to orphanage. Me and my two younger siblings, we lived in an orphanage for about a year. At the end of the year, the social worker came back, and she asked if I would like to be part of a foster care family. The word family got me to say yes right away. I only had a foster mom. From the very beginning we met her, she pointed out that she never wanted older children. She made it clear that any time I disobey or got out of line, she could send me back to orphanage. I don't want to go back. There was a day she took me and my siblings to an organization that was doing food stamps. We got our food. But then I was about to leave and my foster mom was like, hey, not yet. And when she guided me towards the long line of people just standing. When it was our turn, the person just looked at me and gave me a shoebox. And the person just smiled and said, here, it's a gift for you. I did not understand why a stranger would give me a gift. foster mom told us we had to wait till we get home. That was the four longest miles in my entire life. I also remember it was a cold winter day. We didn't even notice we were cold. So when we got home, my younger sibling dug in right away with the box. And the first thing I saw was their joy, their happiness for the first time. It warmed my heart so much to just see them happy. Then I looked down at my box and I just looked at it. I opened the box and the first thing was this little purple mouse. It's my first toy I have ever owned that was just mine. Besides the box, I also got a greatest gift booklet. The booklet was full of illustrations. I was amazed and I loved the illustrations and colors and so I started reading it. It got my curiosity up so high because he was talking about Jesus, Lord, resurrection, prayer. But most of all, I think reading that he is my savior and that he loves me made me rethink everything I knew about what I was going through. It wasn't until a few years later, when I was about 14, when I was going through some hard things. I didn't felt loved from the day I was born till I got to foster care system. Even through there, while she cared for us, there was really no love, no emotional attachments. I remember the connection the booklet gave me, which made me remember what I read. And so when I read that, it made me really felt like, I cannot believe a stranger will feel love for me which helped me to really pray for the first time. It felt like a warm, invisible blanket wrapped around me. It felt like Lord was giving me a hug. Officially, He has found me. And so from that day, I never stopped praying. I prayed that we would officially will have a family. Our prayers were answered. We finally got a family. We were adopted in Arkansas. This picture was taken in Latvia because my parents traveled to my country to pick us up officially as their daughters. Their love for us is strong and pure and I love them so much. I told my mom and my dad, we have to pack a box. 
So each member of our family ended up packing a box and we send it off every single year. It may seem simple to others, but it spoke so much to me and meant so much to me. Operation Christmas Child, shoebox hit, changed my life. We have two weeks to get them done this year. So that means we've got to dig in and get them done. So if you will, this morning before you leave, let's pray. Heavenly Father, these things in the hand of God are extremely important. And that's what we need. So pray about that. Pray about your part. Go ahead. Now if something happens that, that, that in order to get them spent, that money is a little too much and you want to do several boxes, you don't worry about that. We'll cover the postage if you need us to, okay? But more than anything, let's, let's make sure that there are boxes from our church placed in the hands of children and they can know how much Christ loves them. Amen? I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm not going to take time to introduce Jerry because you're not coming up yet anyway. Um, <laughs> but... I'm not going to introduce him. You know Jerry, uh, and you know we are blessed to have him. If you are not here on Friday and Saturday, I'm sorry you weren't. It was an incredible time. It was awesome. A time of prayer and, 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 and movement of God's spirit. And this morning, we know God's here with us already. So we are going to continue to enjoy being in the presence of our Lord. So let's pray. So, Father, we come to you today thanking you. That we don't have to search for you, we don't have to look for you, you tell us that you're already here. And so what we need to do at this moment is to just simply step into your presence. To allow, Lord Jesus, all that's on our minds, our hearts, everything that, that we brought with us here today that is so burdensome, Lord, or even so joyful. Lord, we're going to bring it with us into your presence. And we want but one thing today. We want but one thing, and that is to offer you our love, to offer you our praise. Because we know as we do that this morning in return, return we are going to experience your presence. You are going to speak to our hearts. Father, you are going to lead us to be transformed into your image. And Lord, we are going to praise you and worship you and love you even more. Lord, as much as we give you here today, we can't, we cannot, we cannot outdo you. And so we are in advance going to thank you for all that you will do in us, with us, and through us today. Lord, we have no fear for that because we can trust you because of the cross. So, Lord, give us an open mind, an open heart, a willing spirit to be with you at this time. Thank you, Jesus, because you're the one that makes it all possible. We pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen.
I guess I will introduce you here. Um, for those of you who don't know him, Jerry Garner is a pastor at Gilgal Baptist Church up the road. Um, I had the privilege of knowing him for 42 years now. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> but uh, the greatest thing I can tell you is, is about Jerry, you know, not the bow business, not about the, the ecology lab, all those other things. The greatest thing I can tell you about Jerry is I have seen Jesus Christ in his life over the years into the image of who his son Jesus is. And, and so we are privileged and honored to have this man here with us. And it's not by any mistake that he is here, and there's no mistake that each one of us is here. So Jerry, just come here. God bless you. I was blessed to be a part of what took place here at Big Stevens Creek Friday night and yesterday morning. Abraham said, but God, I'm an old man. And God said, Abraham, my word is sufficient. And Moses said, God, I can't speak. And God said, Moses, my voice is sufficient. Paul said, Lord, would you take this thorn out of my side? 
And God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient. I don't care this morning what your needs are, and you can try to hide from them as much as you want to. And every one of you right now knows exactly what I'm saying. I don't care where you are on the plane this morning. I want you to understand this, that God is sufficient. He can take care of whatever you are dealing with if you will just release yourself to him. I told the uh, participants in our prayer conference that they would probably hear this scripture again. And it's found in the sixth chapter of Isaiah. I want to start with verse 1, and I want you to play, pay close attention to what God's Word says. Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. Now, I want to tell you this about Isaiah. You need to be careful when you read him. This man wrote in three different times and one verse, okay? He, he stayed uh, a mystery the entire prophecy. And he would be talking about the past, present, and future all in one sentence. So you have to be careful when you read Isaiah. One in chapter 6, we see these words, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. And so I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Father, thank you for your grace that is truly sufficient. Thank you, Father, for this gathering this morning, this morning of brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I thank you for every individual that is here. Father, they are here by your perfect design. And I ask that right now, Lord, you would bind Satan and his demons away, that they have no interference. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit's power would be evidenced this morning. I pray, Father, that each individual would feel your presence right now, Father, to the point to where they cannot control themselves any longer. They can't contain those things that are hampering them and hindering them any longer. Father, that there will be this complete flushing of the systems. Lord, you are holy. <laughs> we just read that, Father. You are holy. And all of your creation speaks of your glory. Every part of it. Lord, so often we don't bow down before you like we should. But I pray this morning we will. Thank you, Lord, for your power, for your position, for your place, for your provision, for your protection. Glory to you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Friday will be Veterans Day. Do we have any veterans in our congregation this morning? If you are a veteran, would you please stand up?
You guys look around. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Each one of you, thank you for your service to this country. Thank you for what that represents today in our nation. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. God's good. God is good. He blesses remarkably. Isaiah saw the glory of God. I want you to think about that for just a second. Uh, think about what went through this entire scenario of what Isaiah saw. The, the scripture tells us when this took place, you know, it was... Uh, at the death of Uzziah, which was around 739, 742 B.C., basically 750 years before the birth of Christ, Isaiah saw because he looked. Where was Isaiah? Isaiah was in the place of worship. He was in the place where they offered sacrifice. He was in the place where there was the Ark of the Covenant. How many of you know about the mercy seat that was on the Ark of the Covenant? It's incredible. But Isaiah saw the glory of God. Friday night, we had an opportunity to interact. And after the uh, time together Friday night was over with, I had people to come up to me and say, let me tell you about a time when I prayed. The whole, the whole premise is this, congregation, is that we have this element in our lives called prayer. It is a gift from God. You know, God is who He is. Think about the vastness of the universe. You know, I, I'm fascinated with all of the telescopes and these satellites they have up there, and they're taking these incredible pictures. And I mean, you look at, at the vastness of, of what God has put together. This incredibly large arena. And then you bring it down to one planet, which is microscopic compared to the whole wholeness of the universe. And then on that planet, there's this one person by the name of Jerry Garner. And the creator of all of that is concerned with me? Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because I was created in his image. I was created in the image of God. And so, yeah, he is, he is concerned with me so much that he allowed his son to be sacrificed on a cross. That's how much he was concerned for me. He was concerned with every one of you the same way. Every one of you today in this congregation, God allowed his son to die on a cross for. And he gave us this thing called prayer where we can talk to the creator of the universe. <laughs> this, this God that has the ability to do anything, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying right now, God can do anything. It, there are no limits. And we can speak with him. We can get intimate with this creator. And that's what the weekend was about. I wish all of you could have been there. I wish every one of you could have been a part of this. And I know that, you know, some of you were what they say is providentially hindered. <laughs> but I know some of you could have been there that you didn't show up. I also know that, okay, I'm not, I wasn't born last night, all right? I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Some of you could have been there, and you just chose not to be there. But I hope that you will experience this morning a part of it. I told people about times that uh, God had 
put someone in my path while I was at Lowe's or while I was at Tractor Supply or wherever, uh, and they would ask me about prayer. You know, they know me. Uh, some of them know me as a Sunday school teacher. Some of them know me as a pastor. But they would come up to me in these places and say, I need for you to pray for me. I got a three-cell brain. I won't remember from point A to point B, okay? So I made it a habit when somebody says, I need for you to pray for me, that's what I'm supposed to pray for. It doesn't matter where we are. That, that's where I, I need to pray for them. I need to pray for them right now. And I'll tell you what happens when I do that. The Holy Spirit will put them on my heart and my mind later on, and I continue to pray for them, okay? But I need to pray for them at that point. Now, is this comfortable? Well, to me it is. You know, it might not be comfortable to some of the people that say, Jerry, I need for you to pray for me. You know, we're in a crowded place, and all of a sudden I start praying. I hooked up with a crowd one time. They asked me to meet them at Shoney's. Do you remember when Shoney's was open in North Augusta? <laughs> they asked me, said, Jerry, would you meet us? I I'll tell you, let me tell you how I got to know them. I was asked to do a, a presentation for a youth group for a group over in Augusta. So I did the presentation for the youth group, and I got to meet these characters, and they said, would you, would you meet us at Shoney's on like Wednesday morning? I said, sure, that'll be great. He said, well, good. He said, it'll give us an opportunity to, to talk together, to fellowship, and to pray. And uh, I had no idea what I was about to get involved in. Those guys shut Shoney's down, okay? They prayed out loud. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't used to that. Man, they prayed out loud. People were looking, and I thought, what in the world, you know? And so after it was over with, they were like, yeah, you know, this is awesome. Can we do this again next week? And I'm thinking, how do I get out of this? <laughs> and then one of them said, I tell you what, he said, let's meet in the parking lot and pray. I thought, that, that's a good idea. You know, we're going to be away from people. Okay, so I meet them in the designated parking lot the next Wednesday morning. This guy drives up in a van, and this van is loaded down with big crosses about this tall. And they started hauling these crosses out and gave everybody a cross. And so we're standing out in this parking lot holding on to these big crosses praying. Well, congregation, I'm going to tell you, it didn't take long for the Holy Spirit to start really working my life. It was working. This whole prayer thing was really working. And I saw some amazing things. We ended up praying in front of a biker's bar. That's where we finally decided to assemble and pray. We wanted to pray until the biker's bar closed down. So we ended up praying in front of this biker's bar. Well, these guys would be there early in the morning. I don't know what they did for a living. I don't know how they survived, what they do. I mean, they would be there when we would meet at like 4.30 in the morning. They were still there in that bar drinking and carrying on and just living a, a riotous life. And man, did they make fun of us. They would get outside and crank up the motorcycles and circle us and rev up the engines, and they made complete fun of us. But we prayed, and we prayed. One morning, it was about 17 degrees. I'm serious. It was about 17 degrees. We were outside praying. We were in a little circle. And the owner of the bar comes out with a platter filled up with coffee. And he said, you guys look cold. Would you like coffee? And the guy that was kind of leading this thing looked at him and he said, you look lost you need to be prayed for and he said my mom is sick and I heard that prayer works we got him in the center of the circle and prayed for him the bar closed down I don't know whatever happened to this man but I know he was touched by the testimony of some men and their willingness to I'm going to up right now, and I'm going to ask for the participants that were in this group, if you feel led of the Holy Spirit to come and share a testimony with this congregation.
it will be powerful. So I'm going to ask you to do that right now. Brother Skip, do they have a microphone? Okay. Okay. First of all, I just want to say to you thank you for the weekend and doing it for so much. You're such a good man. I'm glad you and Helen were both here. Uh, been a friend a long time. I love you. I thank you. Uh, what I want to tell y'all, um, you weren't there. You know, Gary told us a lot of things that really uh, some of you know, but you forget. And uh, one of the things we were talking about was focusing on God when we pray. And I'm like, well, who do you think I'm talking to? But then I, I thought, oh, there is a good example of someone who every morning I get up, walk in my bed, before everybody gets up, get the coffee in my Bible, I read and pray. And so many times I'm praying and I'm praying, and all of a sudden I'm going, I'm a day. I got to go out here and I'm going, I think he's too low. And I'm going, get him off my soul, you know. And, I, I, and I'm like, what? Wait a minute. What? I totally lost focus. So what you said really drew me with that. I mean, I one thought, I, starting this morning, I started focusing uh, when I pray. Uh, another thing that you said was when we pray, we pray uh, on, on a two-lane road. So many times we just pray, we talk to God, and we get up and leave the room. It's a two-lane road. We pray, and then Jesus said we need to sit and listen for the voice of God. And he made a great example. He walked up to John Perry and he said, let me ask you a question. He says, uh, what's your name? What's your wife? Where are you going to church? You live in North Carolina? How many children do you got? I'm going to be by. You know? And I thought, that really hit home with me. That's how we do God. We, we, we run off our list and we walk off and thank the Lord. And so it really made me think about sitting, which I don't do much, but made me think about sitting and listening the voice of God. I, I've never audibly heard the voice of God, but God speaks to us, and to me especially through the scripture. Uh, he speaks to me through Skip Michael, through Jerry God, through my Sunday school teacher, through my friends. Um, he speaks to me if, if I'm praying for someone, and Ray Brown pray for Ray, and Ray is healed, and then Ray says, you know, I have a great, great report. I'm doing well. God shouting at me, I got it. I'm taking care, I'm speaking to you. So, Jerry, just those things right there really hit me and made me think just in these last days that I'm going to change the way that I approach God and pray. And I just thank you so much for bringing these things to our attention. And uh, I love you. All glory to God. You weren't here, you really did miss a blessing. Um, I'm kind of newer here. I've only been here six years, so when I was in the group and I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to pray for some of these folks? I don't know much about them. At first, I couldn't remember Thomas's name to save my life. I know he's young, but I didn't know him. But we, uh, one of the exercises that we did was that we needed to pray for everyone that was in our group. And so we would get behind that person that we would pray about that to the for that person. And the thing was, all these things started coming in my heart. The Holy Spirit was all over that thing. And then little Caleb gets well, he ain't little. Caleb gets behind me and starts carrying on about me. I'm like, that guy doesn't know me, but he sure did. <laughs> he knew all kinds of stuff about me. He just was you know, just just praising God for me and the thing. Oh my goodness, it was it was. Y'all missed out. Oh my gosh, y'all missed out. And I hope that we can do more things like this because now I feel like, you know, we always say that we're brothers and sisters in Christ, but my goodness, we are brothers and sisters. I really felt that family. You guys know how I am anyway. I'm all touchy feely and all that kind of stuff. But I really did feel the love coming from folks that I didn't think anything about them. And I thank y'all for that. And I, sir, I thank you so much. 
Pastor, you're always just taking care of us, man. I appreciate the way that you take care of us and make sure that we are covered. And I appreciate you. You know, this weekend was special for me. I, I accepted Christ when I was six years old. And there's no doubt in my mind that that was an experience, personal relationship began with Jesus Christ. But I'm 74 years old, and during that time, I've seen a lot of changes in my life. I know God's not through with me yet. He's teaching me things every day. This weekend, he taught me a lot. You know, one of the things that impressed me this weekend was when Jerry was talking about the opportunity that we have to go into the very throne room of the Creator of the universe. And I can do that. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, that God loves me so much. That he says, Gary, you can come in and you can spend time with me and you can tell me everything that's going on in your heart. You know, it's like a parent sometimes. I've learned this over the years that Vern and I knew exactly where our boys were up to. But you know, we wanted them to tell us. We wanted them to come to us and tell us. Just spend a little time with us and, and then we would have the opportunity to say, that's all right. I love you. I know what you were doing, and I love you. And that's what God is with us sometimes. But I've had to learn that I have two ears and one mouth. I need to listen twice as much as I speak. And so when my prayer time, I do have a prayer time, but because of this weekend, because of Jerry, and because of what so many people were saying, because of the whole prayer, I need to spend more time listening to God. I need to spend more time just meditating on what he has to say to me through his word. And I've got it all figured out. So like Liz said, man, if you weren't here, we need to do it. We need to do this next week. <laughs> we just need to have opportunities to again come together. I think in our growth groups, we need to spend time just praying. We don't do enough of it. Whether it's at home, whether it's at church, we don't have enough of it. Spend time getting into the Savior. I don't normally do this because I'm going to cry. But one thing I did learn is I realized in my prayer life, I'm shortchanging myself. Because I promise somebody, and sometimes I don't. And I'm actually more shortchanging them. That's so I'm going to take it a lot more seriously and spend time getting to know my Lord better so that I can remember to pay, pray for the people that I said I would. And I hope it works. Um, something that we know uh, is that the enemy is one of his biggest weapons in the wilderness. And we have an amazing church that um, is loving and friendly and encouraging, and I have not felt a lack of love in this church. But I know that we can each, even in the friendliest church, um, feel lonely because you don't necessarily feel seen when somebody sees what's going on inside. And there's something that I didn't realize that I was missing that um, until we did that prayer circle. And we praise before you, like when, when that person puts your hand on their shoulder or when you put the hand on their shoulder and you start praying for them, it's not just the two of you, there's the two of you kneeling before God and talking. Um, and you feel so seen. And like Miss Woods was saying, I, there were people I had no clue how to pray for, and I had never talked to in my life. Um, and God, the Holy Spirit, put on you exactly what you need to pray for them in that moment. Um, but you feel so seen because it's, it's God speaking through you. And it was very meaningful. And like um, Pastor Gary said, this would be great in growth groups, and our growth group did it today. Um, and it was phenomenal. And um, my favorite part, I don't know, there he is, as we'll see in the head, I said after.
afterwards. He said, you're so vulnerable. And that's like, we've, it was an amazing bonding experience yesterday morning. It was an amazing bonding experience in our class. They're all sobbing. Um, but, um, yeah, um, I just, yeah, it was great. And it's, it's super important um, because, like I said, prayer, that's the intimacy of you Two things that are vitally important to me. Two things that make me extremely happy. And those two things is when somebody says, Hey, will you pray for me? And the other one is when they say, Hey, I'm praying for you. Amen. This week, spending time with each other. But I 
sat up. I put my feet in front of me. And I said, now, boy, God, I'm sitting up, but I still can't get up. But there was a peace that come under me, and I knew God was hearing me, and I knew he was going to help me. So I sat and put my feet in front of me, and I used my hands, and I raised up about two inches off the ground, and I would move a couple of inches. And I did that for over half an hour. And I managed to slide myself to my door. And when I got there, for some reason I, I couldn't pull myself up on the fence that I was right against, but I was able to pull myself up and sit on the still on and then I raised up and I sat on the next step. I'm not a hundred percent of saying sure, but I know exactly how and when I stood. I just know that I did. And I know that God got me back in my house. He also gave a whole day tell me you don't need to be raking leaves <laughs> um, and other things along that line. But I just, I want to say that, that God is so good. He is so good. He loves even me. Even though I was born Methodist and was saved in a Methodist church, and my husband made a South Carolinian and a Baptist out of me. And I'm thankful. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this church and with these people is exactly where God wants me to be. I thank you for praying for me. And so many of you have. Yes, I've been through some hard times, haven't we all? Is there anybody here that hasn't experienced some hard times? Anybody? I didn't think so. We all do. But God is with us. He's with, he was with me when I fell on the floor of the yard. Uh, he was with me even though I was doing something really stupid that I knew I shouldn't be doing. Do any of you ever do something stupid? Never. I don't see a single hand in there, just you and me. <laughs> anyway. I think a lot of the things that I have been through have brought me closer to the Lord. Maybe they weren't pleasant going through them, but I feel closer to Him now than I ever have in my 83 years. I thank Him for loving me. He died on the cross for me as if I was the most important person in the world. He loves me. Even though many times I'm unlovable, there's a whole lot of time that I don't love myself, not one bit. And there are things that should cause Jesus just to turn his back and walk away, but he never, ever has. He never has. He's with me all the time. Prayer is a true gift that God has given us. I love praying for others and I love having you pray for me. I have a prayer partner in this church and we pray for each other. And that is such a blessing to me to know that she is praying for me. Eric Bruton has prayed me through lots of hard times, and I thank you, Eric, for that, wherever you are. I don't see you, but I thank you for that. 
Eric and his family have lifted me up through a lot of hard times. I just, I don't have any fancy words, but I just want to say thank you to my church family. I love you all. And please don't stop praying for me, okay? Thank you so much. Kindness in your heart and the servant 
Um, Mr. Mickey, you have been here for as long as I can remember. It's just that perseverance to always come has put something, just taught me to always come to church and to never um, to stop. Um, there was someone else. Oh, yeah. Ben, you have, you are in my group, but you have just always been a really good friend, and your wisdom has always just, hey, you got it, trust me. <laughs> you, you just, um, it's shown off onto me, and I thank you for that. And each person in here has, the, everyone in this church family has shown something and to me, and that is reflected in my life. So that's what I got. God has his hand all over you. Okay? I want you to understand the fullness of what I'm saying. Okay? Father, Lord, I thank you for this young man. I thank you, Father, for his courage and his obedience to stand before this group of adults and testify the way that he has. Lord, I, I don't have that spirit of discernment to see what's in his future, but you do. Lord, I thank you for him. I thank you, Father, for uh, how you're going to use him in the future. Lord, you are so good. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> but about 20 years ago, I was sitting in the office of uh, Ray Frank. I had been out of church for about 18 years. Turned to the road. And he just said, he said, don't you come visit? So I did. And that was about, like I said, 20 years ago. So his wife and I, we came in and we just stayed. And then about a year later, Jerry Dawkins comes up and says, Won't you come to a Sunday school class? Sunday school class. <laughs> I'm not into all this. <laughs> so I finally went in there. It was him and the Larry Tom went to have a coat class. And I had a Sunday school class. And that was a. I know you guys were praying with me. I told Caleb that if he went, I'd go. So here we are. <laughs> um, I think God said a lot to all of us who were there, but a lot to me as well. Um, one thing that I know I'll remember for a long time. I think you said it on Friday. We shouldn't be willing, or we shouldn't pray for anything that we aren't willing to be part of the answer for. Like, if it's important enough to us to bring it before God, it should also be important enough for us to act upon that. That's what stuck out to me.
You know, I don't know that I can say anything that hasn't already been said about what we did over the weekend. <clears throat> you know, so I'll just tell you what God told me to say. He said to tell you a little bit about my story. So, we did read a verse on Saturday from James <coughs> chapter 5, verse 14. If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. The Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. You know, some probably 12 years ago now, my wife was pregnant with Brady. And uh, there's a lot of things wrong with her. I could try to tell you what they were medically, but I, I just mess it up. So, but that, there was nothing that anybody could do. There was nothing that any of the doctors could do. You're going to see specialists every week. They're, um, they're basically telling you, you know, just get ready because you're going to have a child that has some sort of, you know, deformity or may not even survive or any of these things. And uh, so my dad, he's a pastor, and uh, I've long since forgiven him for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked him, I, it was three guys in the church, he was at it at the time, I, you know, I had read the scripture. say you are and you're you're man enough to have your guy write it and print it in the book. Let's see if you can hold up to it. So me and Brittany and my dad, those three guys sat in his office one Wednesday night and they anointed Brittany because that's close we get to Reagan. But you know, pray for her. I mean there she sits. You know, so when you talk about prayer, when you talk about impact it can have on your life, you know, I, and I'm sitting in a room and I can't say a word, man. But he also says in here that, that the Holy Spirit will, will pray for you when you can't pray for yourself. And, uh, and I couldn't pray for myself that time. I, I said a few words to get it going and then, you know, very good from there. But, uh, you know, what I learned to come here is, you know, I'm, I'm generally the reason that there's no movement in my life with God. It's not God. And, um, and I didn't really, to be honest with you, I didn't really want to come. But I asked my wife, to go, and she says, uh, sure, I said, I'd like to go. So, the good husband that I am, I decided to show up. Now I'm getting elected leader of the group. I said, well, that'd be great. Every time I've been elected leader, that's always worked out great. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, the funny thing is, you know, I didn't grow up expecting to get anything out of it. And I can't stand up here and tell you how to pray better or what to pray for. All I can tell you is that, you know, there was an opportunity this weekend it wasn't on my calendar. It was for God to meet with me. And I didn't know what was happening, but it happened. You know, so I thank you for coming. What was your book? Um, and if you weren't there, I'd, I'd encourage you to next time try to make it a priority. I'm sitting over there just shaking all over. But I can tell you, I like the way when the book got out, I saw you started cold and cold and cold. When you first read that, I did not. It just kind of jumped out of my face. Um, that was the first that I don't know, probably 30 years ago that 
of stuff for the end. You know, Sunday school class or uh, Sunday school teachers, they always start our class anyway. Just uh, bless the Lord all my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I always, it kind of goes through my mind at Amen. And I always ask him, Holy Spirit. Because Friday night, that was brought out. How many times have I approached God? I like to talk. I know it's going to, but I know through God's Spirit that my prayer life can be better and I can approach Him as holy because that's what He is. He made somebody like me in His image. And I'm here to represent Him. He's the one that I want to represent. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you know the group that I was in to go around and to, man, I don't feel like. We sat over here and y'all sat over there, but I was involved with someone sitting over there. I didn't really know how to pray either about their needs, and God showed me that. So it wasn't a big deal. But anyway, it was an awesome, awesome experience. And uh, if we ever have an opportunity again, we'll try to do that a little, little touchy. <laughs> So I came in here yesterday and listening to everybody share about um, how things went yesterday makes me really regret it. Um, not being here. Um, it wasn't because it was a, not a priority. We um, had previous engagements, but um, 17 years ago, I was sitting in um, Sunday school and Jerry Gardner was teaching. He was our Sunday school teacher then. And it was in the old Fellowship Children's Church. I was sitting and um, I was um, not a new Christian, but I had was young, and I had just kind of started really getting um, the understanding of the part of Savior and Lord, the, the Lord part, and that He needed to be Lord. So I was really trying to understand um, my prayer life at that time, and I was sitting there, and Jared Gardner on a Friday night, he said, um, "Has any of you ever heard God speak to you?" And at first, no one moved or raised their hand, but then people started to raise their hand. And, um, and we talked about how, how does God speak to you? You hear the word, other people. Um, and um, it was said, um, like, have you ever heard him speak, like his voice? And um, I don't know if um, this is what happens, but I was sitting there and Jerry was teaching and I saw his mouth moving, but I didn't hear any of the words coming out of his mouth. And all of a sudden, it was just this voice in my head. And for some reason, it was Jerry's voice. And so God's voice is Jerry's voice. It always has been since that time in my life. But it was, you need to ask this man to come into your home and pray for you and pray for your home. I didn't know him very well. We had only been here for about a, a year and a half at this church. And he was scary, <laughs> very intimidating, loud, booming voice. I'd never heard anybody teach like him. And um, so I was, I, I, my heart was pounding and I felt like this boom, boom, boom in my head. But I felt God was saying, you need to have him come in. And then he started listing off other people, Larry and Jackie Donovan, Eric and Cheryl, their preacher at that time. My mom and dad, Richie and Mike, and there was somebody else, and I can't remember who it was. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I was arguing with God sitting there in my head. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And somehow Sunday school class ended, and somehow, for some I don't even remember, I ended up standing in between the bathrooms, the ladies in the um, men's bathroom right there, and just God put me right in front of Jerry. I mean, just right there, like he was talking to somebody else, and I couldn't move. So I knew right then that God wanted me to talk to him, and I was like, hey, um, I feel like God wants me to ask him something. And Jerry, was just, and I was young, and I didn't know very much then, and I was like, God wants you to come into my house and pray. And at that time, 
most of you guys already know this. So but at that time, my husband was in jail and had been for a while. And uh, we had been going through some really, really bad stuff. Some, where's Caleb? Where's Caleb? Bad crap. <laughs> okay. And um, I knew that for my life and my home life and my children's <coughs> life to get better, I needed these people. Pray for me. I don't know why these people, I do know now, but I don't know why these people. But he said, all right, well, let's get that together. And then that was it. We walked off. Guess what? He made that happen. And these people came into my home that I really didn't know very well, except of course my mom and dad were chilling. And we all sat in my little living room and they prayed. They prayed for my husband. They prayed for my children, they prayed for me, they prayed for our home. And then we all kind of went about life as usual. My wife was never the same after that. And the impact that those prayers of those people have had on my life, my husband's life, my children's life, has been huge and has continued to make impacts. Those same people have continued to make impacts. So when I heard that he was going to be here, I wanted to be under his teaching. I wanted to hear what God had to say through him. And the fact that he was talking about prayer and the importance of prayer and having people lay their hands on you and having people surround you in prayer, it just blew my mind. The fact that he said, have you ever heard God speak to you in my first memory of God actually really speaking to me and telling me to do something was through this man. And so I am so glad he was here. It, it just made my heart with joy. And I will say this, my life hasn't been perfect since. No one's life is perfect after um, an experience with Christ. And, and even though sometimes it, it's, it's really, really hard, and I, I feel like I kind of have a tendency to want to fix it myself, God says, hey, hey, I fixed it before. I can fix it again. You just got to give it to me. And so those experiences, that experience, God always takes me that, back to that experience because that was one of the biggest impacts in my life and in, in, in our life and family. And so don't ever ever forget how important prayer is and having other people pray for you because they're they may be able to pray something god may be able to use their prayers to do something in your life that you weren't even thinking needed to be done thank you jerry thank you I've got this book, I'm just going to speak from here, talking about probably from year to year and things like that. I just got to thinking back and about prayer and, and uh, just thinking about this. I, 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 I really have five for people praying for me, I wish one or two. But anyhow, this uh, goes back to about 1982, I think, my daddy was an alcoholic, he had been most of his life, which caused a lot of heart suffering in my family. But anyhow, he was in a nursing home up at Easley, South Carolina, which is about 20 miles from Greenville, about 12 miles from Bethany University. Anyhow, he had been in that nursing home a while, and uh, it so happened that there was a nurse that she's known to be a Christian. So she was coming around one morning, and uh, her daddy said to her, she said, Ernie, she said, I don't feel right about myself. And, uh, and she said, Mr. Finley said, just go fish in that morning. All the way to now, get me to come back here and talk to you, you know. It's a Christian, a real guy that he knows and what's here. Then now they came down and talked to him, and he accepted the Lord. But what, what was the coincidence? They lived in a 
same passions you read about Elijah you know he argued with God he was scared you know he wanted to walk away from his ministry at one point in time but it says he prayed earnestly that it would not rain not and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. The most powerful thing we have on this earth is prayer, because we're talking to God when we pray. I know beyond a shadow of doubt that there are people in this congregation right now that need to be prayed for. And you can let Satan steal this gift from you if you want to. But I'm going to ask you right now, if there's something in your life that you need prayer for, and you don't have to stand before this church and say what it is, I just want you to come forward and either sit or kneel or whatever you want to. Just stand if you want to. And I can assure you that somebody is going to come lay their hands on you and pray for you, although they may not even know you. So, Brother Eric, I don't know how you wanted to do the invitation, Skip. I don't know what you want to do. I'm going to cut it over to you right now. And uh, I just want people to have the opportunity that feel like I need to be prayed for. There's something in my life that I need to be prayed for. And again, you don't have to stand up here and tell everybody what it is. It's just don't walk out of this building without having the power of prayer applied to your lives. Don't do it. Don't let Satan lie to you another second. Come to this altar. And like I said, just stand here or kneel or whatever you want to do. And someone is going to come lay their hands on you and pray for you.
how do we do this then? Members of our and don't hesitate. God has a way he wants to bless you. I can remember sitting in my office one day <clears throat> at a point of discouragement I rarely faced. Observed a lot of division, people's hearts giving evidence of things I never thought I'd see believers do. sent his messenger Mr. Arlen he walked in my office and said I don't have any other reason to be here except to pray for you Mr. Arlen you don't have any idea what a blessing you were to me that day and every time we follow the prompting of the spirit to either pray for someone or say Lord <laughs> bring your bring it's an incredible blessing. So we're going to sing. We're not asking you to sing with us, but we're singing just to give you the opportunity to come and stand here and, and say, Lord, I need you and bring your servant to pray for me. And let's see God work as we um, focus on Jesus as the center of our lives. <laughs>
that's church. Amen. It's church. Let's remember that when we can miss all of us. I came into church the same way all the time and experienced this. Be afraid of change. To be afraid of what God will want to do if we do change. There is only complacency in tradition and corruption. That's right. It's time to be changed. Without fear. And the to be revealed. Brother? thing about church today, Lord, is that we don't leave here the same. We haven't attended a service, Lord. We've been in your presence. We thank you for that. Now, Lord, something's got to happen from this point on. Okay? Because this is a transforming event. Your presence, your will, the experience of who you are, of who Father, in the scripture, there is not one that has ever done that that has left and was the same. We have had the blessing and the privilege of doing that corporately today. So, Lord, if we stay the same, then we deny what has happened here today. Lord, today we were church, church, old, whatever it was, we were one, and I thank you for that. So now, Lord, we open our lives to the next step. Let us move in faith in accordance to your will. We love you, Jesus. How awesome you are. And we pray these things in the only name that can ever claim holiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.